Watching a movie is so complicated these days. You either have to actually put on pants, go drive to a theater and pay $10 for a small popcorn to watch Minions Rise of Gru with pesky teenagers causing a ruckus, or you have to spend 20 minutes researching what streaming service the movie you want to watch is on, only for Netflix to be like, yup, we got it. And then you click the link and it's like, ha ha, you dumb ass. Did you actually think we f***ing had that movie, you stupid and then you just end up renting it for a few bucks on YouTube. And then you only have 48 hours to enjoy it as many times as you can. Streaming services and putting on pants is complicated, stressful, difficult, and time consuming. Not to mention it's not guaranteed that the movie you wanna watch is gonna be on that streaming service forever. Buy a DVD today. Chances are, if you own DVDs at home, they're probably from over 10 years ago. Or hand-me-downs from your older siblings and parents. And that might not be surprising to you because 2005 was the biggest year for DVDs. And the same year that The Pacifier starring Vin Diesel came out. Coincidence? I think not. Plus, since 2008, DVD sales have declined more than 86%. And part of that is because of the big boom in subscription streaming services like Netflix and Hulu. But those only started to balloon in sales in 2011. What really kicked off the demise of DVDs and Blu-ray sales was the 2008 recession. People were having a hard time with finances, but I was sitting in my room playing Maple Story, wondering if my mom will let me have mac and cheese for lunch again. But as people people had less disposable income, they naturally spent less on leisure items, like their third copy of Shrek 2 on DVD. Plus, back then, around 2008, DVDs and Blu-rays of your favorite movie were about $20 USD, which is about $30 USD in today money. And why do that when I can get it for much cheaper on a streaming service? Or rent it from Redbox, especially in economic downturn. And I'm an expert on economies. Well, because DVDs are awesome, and I think we should bring them back. You might have noticed part of my beautiful background consists of this shelf of DVDs. And it's time to let these babies shine. Buying a DVD isn't just so you can have a physical copy of Borat to enjoy on a regular basis. I think we've all forgotten as a society how fun and magical it is to dust off the old PS2 when you really want to watch something and use at least two adapters and struggle to find the right input on your TV and then see the menu screen with its own music, photos, and art and discover all the other things you can do on the DVD besides actually watching the movie. Ugh, what a snooze, am I right? If you were a lonely kid like me, you'll know what I'm talking about. For those of you that grew up with a social life, allow me to demonstrate. DVDs used to have exclusive interviews, behind the scenes footage, deleted scenes, and. What is it, this? That's cheese. What is it, this? That's cheese. And this, what is this? Cheese also. And what is this one? Well, that's cheese. Even games that were exclusive to the DVD. And this was all before you could just look it up on YouTube in 240p. I mean, look how cool this is. They're showing us the behind the scenes of how things were shot and how they used practical effects and CG in Austin Powers. And they included the sing-along versions to the High School Musical DVDs, a secret DVD exclusive song, and lessons on the choreography so I can do this. Yes, I learned that just for this bit, and not to mention how creative the menu is. But out of all the DVDs that I own, my all-time favorite, a surprise to no one, is Shrek 2. As soon as you pop this baby into your USB DVD drive that you bought just for this video, it's just ha-has out of the gate. You get exclusive dialogue between all of the main characters, as each of them represents a different part of the menu. Shrek 2? What kind of title is that? What about Shrek 2, Day of the Donkey? Oh boy. Oh, Shrek 2, the Donkey's Revenge. This is going to be a problem. What about Shrek 2, uh, Too Fast, Too Donkey? Donkey. Just eat your goobers and shut your gob, okay? And not only is this DVD widescreen, thank goodness, but it has games. It's got Far, Far Away Idol, where no matter who you vote for, the winner is always Simon Cowell. And the next. 
far, far away idol is... Sorry, I'm afraid you chose wrong. Nope, it's me, everyone. There's a jukebox of the soundtrack, but whenever you choose a song, it just skips to the part of the movie that has that song playing. There's an interactive map of Far, Far Away, and every time you click on a location, it just plays the clip of the scene that took place there. There's Shrek 2 Trivia, where every time you answer a question correctly and you move closer to the castle, the game glitches, and it takes a really long time for the next question to load. This one was really difficult to get through, but I really wanted to finish it so I could rescue Fiona at the end from Prince Charming like it advertised, but it just played seven seconds of handsome Shrek riding in to save Fiona at the end of the movie, once again reusing a movie clip that was already there. And then it glitched out and just imposed an image of Shrek and Fiona, just, just... So I guess I saved her? I won. But here's where we're really gaming. Find Puss in Boots. <laughs> Misjudged you. Nice. There's even the far, far away times in the DVD with hot headlines like donkey having marriage problems and naughty ice cream vendor and catnip dealer. And you know what you get when you see Shrek 2 on Hulu? None of that. You just get the plain old incredible, awesome, perfect movie without behind the scenes moments like this. For you, baby. I could be. And meeting the cast in their element, and each menu screen has its own animation and screen that you don't get to see anywhere else. Well, we might as well give them what they want, eh? There's just something special about physical DVDs and how creative they got with them. And I know all these behind the scene things from the DVDs can now be found on YouTube, but I just wanted to take the time to appreciate DVDs for what they were because this was an era that DVDs were overtaking VHS tapes. And since VHS tapes were the analog way to watch home videos and movies, they didn't really have the capability to have menus, subtitle and audio options, behind the scenes things and special features. DVDs were able to hold much more value for what they were. They were less bulky than a VHS, and you didn't have to rewind them after use. Sadly, my family got rid of VHS tapes and just started to rely on the $5 bootleg versions of movies that my grandma would buy from Chinatown and give to us whenever we visited, and legally purchased DVDs, of course. Having a physical DVD just feels so good. <laughs> You own this, and you will always own it. So long as you don't lose it, or break it, or scratch it up for fun. I don't know what you do in your free time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? What are you... What are you doing? It'll never get taken away from you or rotated with new movies like Netflix does, unless someone breaks into your house to only steal your DVD collection. I guess these days, for people who still purchase DVDs, they're either collectors or it's gotta be a movie that they really, really like and want to have. A DVD collection I've been thinking of getting recently is the Studio Ghibli collection. Since they make their movies like semi-difficult to access, until now they've put their movies on HBO Max in America. But honestly, that's the only reason I'd pay for HBO Max. So I thought it would just be easier for me to have the physical DVDs of my favorite Ghibli films. Plus, people buy DVDs of their favorite shows too. I was surprised when I looked into a chart of DVD sales in November of 2022. People bought the new Top Gun movie on DVD, along with The Grinch and a handful of other Christmas classics, followed by The Office, the complete series, which makes sense considering The Office is being passed around streaming services like eggnog at a Christmas party. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of anything. So it ended up just being more convenient for people to buy the complete series on DVD instead. I feel like that says something about how convenient streaming services are getting. And saving old physical copies of movies and shows allows you to keep unchanged versions of that media. So if you have certain copies of Star Wars on DVD, you won't have to watch the versions with all these awful changes that George Lucas kept making over the years. Chicken Maggie, yeah. Chicken Maggie.
Like, stop tampering with your movies years, decades after they've been released. Are you trying to JK Rowling the Star Wars series? Like, what was the point of this change? What, what is this? Like, I have some original Inuyasha episode DVDs, and these have the original theme song in them. Because when the series got licensed to Hulu, they completely removed the original theme song. Probably due to some copyright troubles. But I can still enjoy some episodes of Inuyasha in its original preserved glory because I have the physical media. I'm sure other people can go more in depth into the importance of media preservation, but that's just one of the reasons I'm a DVD fan. And I just wanted to show off my DVDs. The rise of streaming services at first made things more convenient to watch the movies you wanted. But lately, as there's more and more streaming services added, we're just adding on higher and higher prices, especially if you're paying for the service with no ads, and it's becoming more difficult to find the movies you want. Am I just getting old or is it more convenient to buy a DVD again? Or pirate it, but... I, I do not condone any bootleg or pirated media on this channel, no, no, no. I guess you either die young or live long enough to become your parents and buy DVDs. The same thing is happening to video games. The only physical Switch game I own is Smash Ultimate. Less physical copies of games are being purchased, and everything is becoming more digital. CD sales have been plummeting, DVD sales have been plummeting, my wife left me and took the dog. <sighs> I'm sorry, I just, I need a second. But yeah, they're still making DVDs, and unlike VHS tapes, are they still making VHSs? I don't know, man. But they're still making DVDs, because people are still buying them. And no, you might be surprised to find out that it's not your grandparents, or my grandma buying $5 bootleg versions of, of Kill Bill in Chinatown. Allegedly, according to this Wired article, according to the MPAA, the Motion Picture Association of America, people aged 25 to 39 are most likely to be DVD watchers. Which makes sense because I, a 25 year old, busted out the old PS2 to watch Borat literally last night. And according to the article, these DVD watchers are most often collectors, locked into building their collection. Plus, there are people that live in the middle of on a farm in Kentucky or something with bad internet, and buying DVDs is the most stable and lossless way to watch movies. Because, slightly off topic here, but I hate how everything is internet reliant now. It makes no sense. Like, to use a locally installed software like Premiere Pro, it needs to be connected to the internet so it can check if I have a subscription in order to use the service. But when I need to use it offline, there's no option to do so. So I can never get anything done on plane rides, even though Premiere Pro doesn't need internet to be used. Plus, I literally open Premiere Pro like five days a week. So it's usually within 24 hours since I last opened Premiere Pro when I want to use it offline. Okay, anyway, uh, maybe there'll be a renaissance of DVDs coming back into popularity like like vinyls. Soon you'll go over your hinge date's apartment and instead of him showing off his Mac DeMarco vinyl, he'll pop in a DVD of whatever Zoe De Chanel movie he's proud of owning. It's, it's a, a possibility. possibility. And like some guy in the article said, on a long enough timeline, everything becomes interesting again. Follow me on Instagram. This is getting weird. Subscribe.